After this video, I will be describing the origin of current and photosensitive diodes. I will describe the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage of a photosensitive diode. A PN junction might be designed with the intention of it being photosensitive and generating current when light strikes it. So just imagine a diode that has that property. Consider three overarching circuit configurations that diode could be placed in. First, there's just a load. Let's hook it up to a resistor. Let photons strike it. So you have light hitting the diode and current comes out of it and goes to the load. And the diode symbol has the p-type up here and the n-type down here. And current comes out the end side. It'll behave like a forward biased diode, except there's no source. It is its own source. The light excites it. A second configuration is open circuit. That is, take away the load and just uh, let this be wide open. In which case, now there's no current coming out for sure. But the voltage that you measure across these terminals is kind of important. It's called the open circuit voltage. Typically, it's going to vary from a fraction of a volt to several volts. We're going to derive an expression for open circuit voltage as we go through this, at least uh, for open circuit voltages that aren't too small. It will be accurate. And then a third configuration is short circuit if you connect a wire across these two terminals. So now any current that comes out will go right around. The current that comes out is for sure the photogenerated current, just all of it. And there's no doubts about it. Unlike the case with the load, where the current that comes out is going to be something less than that, right? Because there's a resistance in the path. But here, whatever current passes through here is the current that the light is making. That's three important parameters. A short circuit current, the open circuit voltage, and the current under load. And let's look at all three of them. If you're going to have a light sensitive diode in a circuit, Let's make a more complete conceptual diagram that includes the load and includes the source of this current. We'll depict the source of this current this way with an ideal current source. So the current that's coming into the diode is coming from this ideal source that's across from it. So the current that the source is kicking out is the short circuit current, which if you take away the load, just goes around and goes through the diode. Take away the load, the short circuit current is the diode current. So that's our more complete picture of a photovoltaic device in a circuit uh, completely with a load cranking out current. And the current I then is the useful current. It's the current that's being taken out and, and used for things. In chapter 4 we came up with this expression for the current going through a diode. It is a diode. There is a voltage across it. Therefore the current going through it is described by this you know, exponential with probably a non-ideality factor in there as well. We also have the Kirchhoff's junction rule at this junction up here where all three of these currents are coming in or going out. We can just write out how they're all related to each other. So these become two useful interrelated relationships. You can, we can go ahead and stick this expression, this Shockley diode expression, into this Kirchhoff's junction rule equation and have an expression for the current that is going through the load. That's what I is. I is the current going through the load. I sub SC is a short circuit current. I sub zero, remember, is the reverse bias current. It's the current you get if you reverse bias the diode and this exponential goes to zero. That's a useful expression. Circle it, write it down, just save it for reference later. So now we're going to find the relationship between the current I, so that's the current going through that load, as a function of voltage. And there are a few assumptions that we're going to make, and they're really explained, I think, with this little schematic here of the PN junction. Consider a P plus N junction, and I want to make that point. It's a P plus N junction. That means the P side is much more heavily doped than the N side. One consequence is that the depletion thickness is very small on the P side, on the heavy doped side. It's much larger on the light doped side. The region where you have space charge is where we have uh, just a uh, our acceptor ions here, so this negative space charge region is very small. This positive space charge region is very, very thick. We talked previously about the use of minority charge carrier density, and it's especially uh, easy to see. I'll show you a diagram here in a P plus N or an N plus P junction. And so in the case of P plus N junction at the depletion edge width, which is this dashed line here for the on the N side, 
the current that we will see is due almost entirely to holes and, and to the diffusion of holes. Here's a graph that's not done quite to this level of detail in your textbook, but you could uh, read up on figure 420 in the textbook. Here I'm doing one additional thing. The green curve here is the hole current, and the orange curve is the electron current. When you get deep into the end side, you have pretty much just have the electron diffusion current. When you get deep into the P size, pretty much hole current. And as you approach the depletion region, the hole current starts to drop. Now, we derived expressions for the hole current and the electron current. We want to look back to our, our earlier lecture on uh, the PN junction, where we derived the expressions for that. So what's different between this figure and figure 420 in the textbook is that I'm blowing up the depletion region. Compare this to figure 420. Please do right now. And in figure 420, the depletion region is considered so tiny it doesn't show up on the graph. Here I've zoomed in on it and I've blown it up. That's the difference. And so in the side of the depletion region, there are no charge carriers. That's why it's a depletion region. All of the, the charge carriers have left. So consequently, you have no diffusive force. The excess carriers are generated throughout the whole semiconductor uniformly. And so in the depletion region, you actually have a uniform distribution of holes and a uniform distribution of electrons, consequently no diffusion force on them. So the current is, is a constant. It's just whatever's pushing all the carriers through from outside the depletion region. So it kind of looks like this, the current distribution over x. And one other really important assumption that we'll make is that the uh, hole current at x sub n is much, much larger than the electron current at x sub n. So that we're only going to do analysis on the hole current and consider that just to be a representation of all of the, the current. And that's only a fair assumption when we have this unbalanced junction, p plus and n. If there were more evenly doped on each side, uh, you wouldn't be able to say that. But here we can say that, and so we will. We talked previously about the diffusion equation. We're going to stick with that now. We're going to use it. And, and we talked about why, in the absence of an applied voltage, diffusion is why you have current. Diffusion is the mechanism. We will use the continuity equation that we derived using the diffusion current. So this is the continuity equation for excess holes, P prime, undergoing diffusion, and d sub p is the diffusion coefficient. g is the generation rate, the rate that electron hole pairs are generated. Tau is the recombination time. Go back and review that if you uh, need to, and we have the solution. Right? This is an inhomogeneous differential equation, and it's the g over d term that makes it inhomogeneous, and so you write the solution by writing the solution to the homogeneous part, and then adding something that's proportional to the inhomogeneous constant. So we have the C and B are two uh, constants that have to be solved for. How do you solve for constants in the, the solution to the differential equation? You apply boundary conditions. So we're going to have two boundary conditions. Before I list them out, I want to get an argument in front of you here that far away from the junction, this is what P prime must equal. So just look at the expression. Far away from the junction, X is large. Now this term has gone to zero. And so all that's left is B, G, or D. Okay, so I just wanted to get that out of the way before we now write down the boundary conditions. The first boundary condition we'll use is far away from the junction. And so P prime at X equal to infinity, X equal large. It should just be the rate that electron hole pairs are generated times how long they last before they annihilate. And that's g tau. So the excess hole density far from the junction is just the product of the generation rate times the recombination time. That's one boundary condition. The second boundary condition, we have a place where we know what things are. At the depletion edge. x equals x sub n. This is on the n side, and we're talking about holes as the minority carrier density. At the depletion edge width, we derived this as well. Go back to lecture 32 and, and read up on the forward bias PN junction. You can also read about in chapter 4, section 6. So that's an expression that we will make use of. Those are two boundary conditions. To circle them, and uh, do you see how you can pretty straightforwardly solve them for B and C? We, we can get rid of B and C in favor of material properties. Material properties are like, D sub P, the diffusion coefficient. Tau, the recombination time is a material property. G, the generation rate. 
N sub I is a material property, and N sub D is the doping density. Those are things that are worth keeping in our expression. We definitely want to get rid of B and C, and of course the actual values of P prime are things to be done away with. We're going to work on that. So let's start with the first boundary condition. Rearrange it. So the first boundary condition was at infinity. The excess hole density is G tau. But we had already figured out that P prime at infinity is B G over D. That's why I made a little issue about it just now. So those have to be the same thing. That means you know what B is. It's, it's just the diffusion coefficient times the recombination time. Let's look at the second boundary condition. We also have an expression for P prime of X. That's what the, the equation we're trying to figure out how to work with here, right? So we came up with that equation here for P prime of X. So we know what it equals when X equals X sub N. That was worked out earlier in chapter four. Evaluate this at X sub N. There you go. Instead of writing X, we write X sub N. Look at that. Uh, this is an equation that has C and B in terms of things that can be known. Look what else is in there. V, the voltage. And that's what we're ultimately going to try to solve for, is the voltage. That's the open circuit voltage of the photovoltaic. Take this and put the B equals D tau in here. And so we have another expression. Equate those two. Between these two, solve for C. You might just want to pause the video right now and make sure you can solve this for C. I'm going to leave that up to you. I don't need to do a bunch of algebra for you. Uh, it's a mess. So for now, we'll just keep using C. We'll go back then to our current now. So we have our expression for P prime. For the time being, I'm going to leave C just alone. If you take the derivative of P prime, you have the current, right? That's the diffusion current density. J is that minus QD times the gradient of carriers. Take the derivative of this expression that we have now for P prime. Again, pause the video and make sure that if you differentiate this with x, you have this. And now put in our nice expression for C. Notice I don't need to know what B is at this point. It's been differentiated out of here. Put in our expression for C. Notice how these e to the x over root d tau cancel. And that, because you're going e to the x over root d tau times e to the minus x over root d tau. So that exponential is gone. And so that helps us to be much simpler. But again, pause and verify. Don't take my word for it that the algebra is right. So that's an expression for the current density coming out of a photovoltaic cell. Oh, and by the way, this is also equation 41210 in the textbook. Now you know where it comes from. Finally, also a third thing. The textbook often uses diffusion length which is related to diffusion coefficient and recombination time this through the square root relationship. You can see it behind this annoying thing that's always in the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and find the open circuit voltage. So you set the current to zero. So that thing we just saw for J, just let it be zero. And instead of writing V, I'll write V sub OC. That's open circuit. I mentioned on the first slide of this that V open circuit is usually around a volt. I mean, it's anywhere from, oh, an eighth of a volt to eight volts. Okay, so it's, it's on in that, in that realm, I guess, typically, for a single dial photovoltaic. What that means is this exponential dominates over the, to, to the minus one. You can ignore this minus one, e to the, like, one over 0.026, right? As long as this exponential is much greater than one, we're gonna get a usable solution here just by uh, solving for V open circuit. So you solve it for that, under that condition. But it, again, it's only accurate if V open circuit is considerably larger than KT, 0.026 volts. What can you do to get a large open circuit voltage? You, know, you can dope the Dickens out of it, right? Or you can uh, make arrangements for a very large generation rate. And that's typically what's done. I guess you can operate at a high temperature, but, you can, but that only goes so far. So let's keep things around room temperature and get G high. And so you go back and, and read, or go forward and read section 13, chapter 4, 13.1, to read up on the material issues in solar cells, such as tandem solar cells that uh, are a trick to, to get high generation rates.